Hello guys, Cyprin here from fu for all and in this fourth tutorial for Yaks, I'm going to show you the last part of uh, my uh, small project to automate the creation of the plate. And this will be about the post processing. So in, at the end of the last video, I asked you to do a small exercise, which was to create a small automation to um, to add some variables and re rewrite the com file to be able to control Aster. So I have done that here and I will show you also how to do that at the beginning of this video. And then uh, I'll show you how to create two ways to post process your node. One using Paravis to generate uh, images of the results and one using a uh, processing of the text file. So let's see right now how it works. So let's start with the script that I used at the last video. And I did a small change to the script because at the end of the last video, actually, I did a small mistake um, about the mesh uh, that I used to for the automation. So what I did is that I took, if you remember, I was into this uh, folder and I went into the run case, the result stage, and you had uh, the export file, the Hermit file, uh, you had the com file. And I basically told to Aster to directly run into this folder using this met file. So if you do that, of course, it worked because it calculates normally and I get the results. But the met file, which it uses here, is not the met file that is calculated here at this step. So basically, these two steps were uncorrelated. So the, the only thing I did is that I took basically this export file, I took this com file and... Uh, and I copied it at the basis of my folder, the YAX example here. Uh, here, I opened the export file and I had to change the links here in the export file to link to the right uh, com file and the right met file. So uh, when doing that, you need to be sure the name here is the name of the met file generated by your previous step of your automation so that Aster will work on this file. Okay, that's uh, that's the only change I did since the last video. And now I'm, I'm going to show you how the rest, how to do uh, next step is how do you create a small automation to rewrite the com file. So to control uh, the variables in our model until now, what we did is that uh, we created some variable here that basically pass to a different kind of nodes which are used to generate the geometry and the mesh. Uh, and then we launch Aster using the mesh generated by here. But there is a discrepancy in between this node and the Aster commands used to control Aster. This, this cannot control the Aster uh, because Aster is built in a bit a different way. It's using a subprocess and it's using text files to control um, the run. So what we have to do to control the variables which are entering into Aster is basically to find a way to rewrite the com file. So if I go into this file and I look at the, the com file here, um, so I open it, this is basically a text file. So I can, I can use Python to write this uh, and just tell it to change the right specific variable that I want it to change. Um, so I want to say, of course, that there may be other ways to do this um, that I'm not aware of. So this is, let's say, my way to do this. Um, and it works. So I guess uh, it's okay for now. So if you have a better way, please leave it in the comment. I will be glad to know about it. So um, let me let me tell you how to, to do that. So what I'll do is that I open a text editor in which uh, I created a very small script. So this script, what it does is that it uh, import the OS module and the sys, sys module from Python. It creates a pass to my uh, com file. So as you see, my com file is located here in this folder. And this is the name of my com file. Um, then I am creating a string. Um, so here, there's nothing here because I didn't create the string here. So I'm going to show you how to do this. 
Um, and then what I do is that I open the file located at this, this path. So I, I open the com file, basically, uh, in write mode. I write to it the string, and I close the file. That's all I'll do in this node. So how do I uh, write the com file uh, with this? So um, let's first copy Control A, Control C, copy all of that. And in Python, if you want to copy a multi-line string, you have to use uh, three, I think it's called hyphens, but I'm not, I'm not sure how it's called in, in English. So you have to write three of like, well, six in total, uh, three on, on both sides of the string, and you just paste your string into it like this. So if you do like that, this string will contain all the com file in exactly the same format than um, the, the format that was originally uh, in your com file. So if I, I was to run that, this will exactly rewrite what I have right now. But of course, we want to rewrite it by changing uh, some variables into it. So that's um, so the thing I'll, I'm going to do here is it's very basic. Um, you see, uh, let's say I want to control the Young's modulus and the Poisson's ratio values. So I am going to, let's see, let's start with that. Delete this value and uh, input also 6 hyphen. So make sure you have the right number. And in between, to, to basically paste a value, you have just entered the value like that. Now, there's something to be careful about. Uh, this is a string, so you want your value to be a string. So you have to enter the Python function str, which will convert whatever value you enter into a string. Otherwise, you'll get an error. And yeah, so I do control on this one. I do the same, except that this one will be called new, like uh, for the poison ratio. And this is basically it. So this this is what will go into my YAX automation node. So let's try. Let's try if this works. Um, let's just copy that. Let's go into my Aston node and let's create. Um, so let's create another input data node because this one will be. So let's let's call that Matt data input like I am let's put two um, double variables and don't forget to change the name into e and new like that let's initialize the values to the original or let's let's put some different values that I had so you'll see a difference 200 thousand in instead of uh, 197,000 and 0. Point, let's say 28 instead of 0. 0.3 right so don't forget to click and apply uh, otherwise you'll have it will not update so that's a classic mistake so click and apply create another node um, another inline script node so this node will be my com writer node um, and this one, I'll just paste the script that I just showed to you into my text editor. And don't forget to give it um, some um, input values. So I, I need to give it two input values, E and uh, new. And it says it's not initialized. That's because I have to link this to this and you see that now this is initialized to the value I am putting into that. So now how do I link that to that? Well first thing is to break the link here. So delete the item here and instead of calculating directly into Aster, I'll calculate this node here and then I'll put the end of this one to here. Don't forget to save your script, to save your project, you never know. Um, and I think we're ready to try. So let's see if that works. Let's uh, prepare the current edited scheme. 
Let's rerun all that so we see that the node is activated. It's green. So let's have a look now uh, if Hester used the actual new parameters that um, I defined. So let's open the log and let's go back into history to see the parameters that have been used. So we just have to go back to the um, material definition common and we see here that the Young's modulus is 200,000 and the new is 0 0.28, which is great. It's the value that I used. And if we open, if we open my uh, com file, we see that the values have been replaced correctly. So it works. Um, I have successfully created a way to control the com file. Let's not talk about the post processing. So, uh, if you remember, I I generate from Aster two types of result. One is uh, the result in Paravis or Paraview format, um, and the other in text format. So I'll generate two nodes which will do separately the job of processing the data in some way using uh, both ways. So you you have an overview of uh, the different methods you can use. So let's go first and uh, generate the Paravis uh, type of results. So for that, let's go into the Paravis module. And let's open here whole result. So it's this one, Ahmed play.res. Okay, apply, let's put this plate in a reasonable angle like this. Let's have a look at displacement and let's display the mesh like this. That will be my first, um, let's say, screen capture. So to generate a screen capture, go into file, uh, save screenshot. You can choose to put the background or not, so I'll, I'll leave the background here. Click on OK. Let's save it into my file. Let's give it a name. So I'll call that dep.png or dep.png2, let's say. OK, so it already exists, so I'll just generate one. Um, and let's now display the Found me this at found me the stress at node, um, and let's make another screen capture of that screen capture. Okay, and this time I'll I'll call that sick node two dot png. Okay. Okay, and now that I've done that you can go into tools, show the trace, and here you'll basically get the code that was used by Paravis to post process um, and do exactly what I did. So this is very similar to the Paraview uh, code because Paravis is basically a layer on the top of Paraview. Where, so it's Paraview but with um, the med, med format file reader that you need to read the med file. So um, you basically read the med file, you're showing the result I want and displaying at the right camera angle and all that. So uh, if you want to have a more detailed look and how this means and how to do Python with Paraview, uh, I have other videos on my channel that you can have a look uh, to understand how Paraview works with Python. So in, in this video, I'll just copy that and I'll go back to my YAX study. Let's generate another node. Um, so create a node, inline script. Let's call that um, post node. Like, okay, call it Paravis post node that. Let's paste the code I just 
generated here. So you just have to be sure that the, the path to the file is correctly defined. So make sure that in your folder, the path here is uh, the correct one. Otherwise it will save the images maybe in, a, in another place or will not be able to, to find the med file. So when this is done, let's just link that my Astano to my Paravis file. Let's go into my desktop. Um, my folder. I'm uh, going to delete all the screen capture that I made previously. And now let's try this YAC scheme to see if, if that works. So let, let's close the previous one I run. Okay. Let's create, let's prepare the current scheme for execution. Let's execute all that. While it's blue, it means it's simulating. Oh, it's green, so it should be working. Let's let's have a look if I have some errors. No error, so let's have a look. And now you see that I have this displacement um, result. So I have the two displacements. So you might have some weird thing here with um, eventually the legend or um, stuff like that appearing. So this is due to the, the, the script here which might need some a bit of refinement in some places. So you might ha need to add a, add a function to hide the legend in the second, when you do the second screen capture or stuff like that. One thing which is, um, which is good to do is here uh, in the render view, yeah, uh, let's go back in the editable, uh, editable scheme, not the execution version. Uh, what is uh, important is here you see render view dot view size and this one generally should be uncommented when you run the script like that so it uses exactly this side this size here uh, in the next uh, portions and if you want to hide the the legend then you just you just have to uh, add the right instruction to hide the legend into this code so we see that now this works so let's see now how I can uh, post-process the text file also. So let's have a look at the text file which is generated. And what can I do with that? If you remember, I, I'm extracting the maximal value and the minimum value at a certain component. Uh, this is the value I'm getting and this is the node. Um, well, you know, it's good to have those information in this file, but what if I'd like to get that into a CSV file with, uh, which would list up those information in a table, for example, so that would be much cleaner, um, maybe to post process after with some other algorithm, I don't know. So the way to do this, to post process this, is slightly a bit more complicated than uh, previous scripts that I have shown to you. Um, but I, I've already written the script here, so you can have a look. And what I'm doing here is that I'm using two uh, modules from uh, Python. One is the regex module. So regex is a way to analyze uh, a text file and to find some information in an easy way into it. Now it's it can find it's very powerful stuff, but it's a bit. Um, it takes some learning to use uh, and you, you have to understand how this works. So you have to, to do a bit of research about this. And the way um, I'm using it here is that I'm compiling the following regex command uh, into this. And what this command does is that basically is that it, it will go through this file and recognize each time it, it finds out um, a string of text that matches uh, exactly this la valeur uh, max min uh, maximal of this is that and that. So, and the values you see into parentheses will be the one extracted into um, into variables. So I'm then using this and the find all function to extract and print uh, what, uh, what I want. So let, let me just hide this. Um, 
hide this one quickly and just execute that in Sublime Text to show you the result. So the result that will be into this variable will be a, like that. It will be an array which will contain um, max or min, uh, the component of the vector and the value, basically. Th those are the three information I want to extract at every line. Um, and the second thing to do once I have done that is that I will create a variable which will be a pandas data frame and I will set up the colon as min max component or value and then I will save that to a CSV file which corresponds to this path. So that's basically a script I'll be using. So I'll just copy that, control C and let's go back into that and let's create a node. Let's create my inline script node. This one will be text, text node. Let's say, let's call it text node. Um, let's paste my code here, apply. Let's connect the same output here, this. So the two kinds of post process will be executed at the same time. Um, I've, I've already done that previously, so I just delete the CSV file generated before. So to be fair, and the images as well. And let's run the script and let's see what I'm getting here. So, post process, execute. And uh, it seems to be working. So if I'm looking at the data here, I'm getting what I want. I'm getting the table into um, this. So uh, to be fair, um, there is some small thing that you'll need to have to do in order to have this script working because I'm using pandas within, um, within Salome which means that the Python distribution within Salome will require you to install the pandas module uh, into it. So what you have to do is to open um, open the, the Salome shell session and you have to install it into Python, into the Python distribution of the Salome uh, platform. And once you do that, uh, you should be able to get it working. Uh, so that's it. So I'm getting now the CSV file and I'm getting the I'm getting the screen captures of my simulation and I have my full automation. So now I can change parameters. Um, and one thing I could do is basically if I want to run a lot of analysis at the same time, I could put, for example, all that in the loop to generate um, several values of Young's models or Poisson's ratio and generate all results and the screen captures and basically generate a small automation in this way. Okay, so I hope this video was useful to you, that you uh, liked it. Uh, if you did, please leave a comment, please let me know. Uh, it's always great to know that some people are learning and getting a lot of stuff from my videos. Um, thank you very much and if you have any video of things you want to see for the next, please leave a comment, let me know. Thank you very much.